in the next slide. Besides logical structure, every manuscript, I mean, just to the point of being repeating this again and again, it speaks a story in which ideas are linked together throughout your manuscript. I already mentioned that your objectives should be directly related to the research problem, but this also means that your key findings should be only those that are related to your objectives. Finally, be sure that your conclusion answers the questions you identified in the introduction. In fact, if you highlight an important problem in the beginning of your stories, your readers expect an answer to that question by the time they finish. That answer is your conclusion. So linking your ideas together throughout your manuscript will help emphasize the significance and relevance of your study for your readers. So before I go on, here is a helpful tip. Be humble and realistic. Don't overstate the importance or significance of your result. In fact, after having worked so much on on our research, we are so happy about this. And sometimes, uh, you know, it's it's a very uh, typical mindset to be mentioning, oh, this is the first in the world or best in the world, something like that. But when it comes to making a conclusion, it is often a very bad idea to say our findings prove that this may be fine in say a field like mathematics, but in the majority of the sciences, this is frowned upon by our peer reviewers. So instead, some better statements could be our findings show that or our findings suggest that. So this is these are just a couple of things that come to my mind. And now, before the title aspect. So before your readers will have a chance to read your paper, most important is to attract their attention first. And this is all the more difficult in this digital world. And the onus of this lies with your title. This is what people will first see when looking for articles to read. And because of this, 